no damn I didn't feel I had a choice, Ray. Actually, we're licensed security agents, pal. I have a diploma in hospitality services. We do not appreciate being called goon. You always have a choice, Fraser. You could be looking at a lawsuit. You could be looking at my fist. You don't put a sock in it. That's intimidation. Yeah, I hope so. Get in the car. If you have a choice, to, you could have stayed at the console. You could have stayed at the station or... or Ray, or... I was hoping to be able to convince Mr. Warfield to do the right thing. He's a wise guy. He's never done a right thing his entire life. Well, maybe now is the time to start. <laughs> Okay, Dave. Yeah. Reese. Thank you. Nice. Respect you. Don't you think you're overdoing it a little bit? I'm just trying to make the place look festive, sir. Police station's not a shopping mall. It's only once a year. Thank God. More murders, more suicides, families tearing each other's throats out, court differential between what you take in, what you put out. Fat guys, red suits. Constable Fraser, can we talk? Of course. Uh... Perhaps somewhere private. Me and Tommy have been thinking about what you said about justice and all. Just thinking is it? We do this testified thing. We, we get protection. I'll do everything I can to ensure your safety. What does that mean? I can't pretend that this is without risks. Mr. Warfield is apparently a violent man. See, I told you. And like I told you, guys have been pushing me around my whole damn life. Don't say nothing. You'll lose your job. Don't say nothing. He'll kick your butt. Don't say nothing. I'm an old man, and I still never said nothing. You don't want to be my age and feel like that. We do this, I doubt I see 20. The guy's going to kill you for a slap in the face. He's smarter than that. So, maybe you better stay out of it, and I'll be a witness. That work? It'll help. Let's get out of here. Hang on. We get protection, right? Protection? If Constable Fraser wants to offer protection, let the RCMP supply it. Call me old-fashioned, but I don't think Yuletide is a great time to get shot in the head and dumped in a river. Ray, in the spirit of Christmas, drop dead. December 1963, breaking and entering. August 1965, car theft. October 1966, assault. December 1966, robbery. Every charge dropped for one reason or another. It's not surprising Mr. Warfield thinks he's above the law. And perhaps if someone along the way had been willing to prosecute him, he might not have become the hardened criminal that he is today. I think it's a little late for that, Constable. What about the assault on Fraser? Warfield called that. Can't we make that stick? Uh, they're claiming Fraser was drunk and disorderly. Disorderly? His hair's not even disorderly. Well, it can be sometimes. They've got 12 witnesses who'll swear that he was threatening Warfield. Constable, no one gets convicted on a first-time assault that doesn't result in actual bodily harm. My God, you can practically beat someone to death in this city and not get convicted. I'm sorry. You get our protection? In a manner of speaking, yes. Shall we? You better have a protection. It's just a finger, son. It's not loaded. Here we are. This is the safe house. Couldn't be safer. I also have several bedrolls here. I thought we'd get a hotel room like in the movies. Maybe a nice looking policewoman to look after us. Well, here comes one now. Fraser, I thought perhaps a little seasonal. Don't mind if I do. Cheer. What are you doing bringing homeless people here? It's Christmas, for God's sakes. I realize that, sir, but these friends of mine are, well, they're needy. And with your permission, I thought they could stay here for the next couple of days. This is the Canadian consulate, not a homeless shelter. I understand that. Suffice it to say that there are issues of justice and individual liberty at play here. And it is Christmas. My point, exactly. I'll leave this to you for now, but tomorrow you, Turnbull, and I will sit down and discuss the decorations for the consulate. What color bulbs to use, the tinsel. Oh, I found some fabulous gold ribbon for the tree. And, of course, spirit of giving, peace on earth, blah, blah, blah. We gonna sleep here? Yes. No offense, but I'm getting a little too old to sleep on the floor. Maybe I should go on home. Uh, well, I'm, uh... I'm not actually sure that that's, that's a good idea. Dog snore? No. Well, yes. Well, you do. You know, it, it, perhaps you gentlemen could take him for a couple of laps in the hallway. He tends to sleep much more soundly after a little exercise. A defense? <laughs> Dad, I have guests. Well, pardon us for living. What, what's going on here? Well, the group are making up some gifts for the orphans. 
brighten up their Christmas. You have orphans in the afterworld? Well, not really. They're just kind of lost. And the group of six have always been known for their charity. Dad, there was never... There was a group of seven. No, not in our group. Always six. Except for that one time we let in Rene Thibault, but he got into the Terps. So, what are you hoping to get these wise men to do? Their duty. Theirs or yours. You know, son, not everyone thinks the way you think. Not everyone has your dedication, your commitment, your, your, well, frankly, your rigidity. I'm only doing what you taught me. Oh, well, I learned a few things since I died. Such as? Well, I wish I'd spent more Christmases with you. And the branch that cannot bend must break. Are you saying I should give up on this? No, of course not. Some trails are solitary and must be taken alone. That'll be for you. You okay? Yes. Yes, I just, uh, I can't seem to locate those darn hugs and blankets. Huh. Eagle eyes, son. Uh, Turnbull said to give you this package. Huh, very good. Huh. The Yukon. Marvelous. Where's Frank? Went home. Said there was no way he could sleep on the floor. Said not to worry. Turnbull! Do you have Frank's address? Sure. Uh, 414 Wilson Avenue. Sir? You're out of uniform, Turnbull. Yes, I am. You see, I was upstairs listening to my Clint Black Christmas album, getting in the festive spirit, if that's all right. I see. I want you to lock up after I go. You don't let anyone in until I return. I want you to guard this man with your life. Trouble, sir? Of a kind. Trouble's my middle name. Right. Well, Tommy, you're in good, uh... Well, you're in hands. Sir. You look like a natural baritone. Do you know the words to Santa drives a pickup? Oh, the elves topped up the gas tank. Santa climbed aboard. He turned that engine over on that 67 Ford. Oh, Santa drives a pickup. The reindeer's ride back. Look out for that fat man, he'll be coming down your stack. Go oh, Santa drives, pick up, come on, reindeer's ride back. Look out for that fat man. You'll be all right. Gentlemen, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to stop. Stop this. <laughs> Do this, I can't. I understand. I'm no hero. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll walk you home. Santa climbed the moon. Turn the engine. Good morning. Sleep well? The dog snores like Mike did go with a sinus condition. Yes, I know. Did you find Frank? Yes. Where is he? He said he had a sister in Waukegan. I believe he's staying with her. He split? I'm afraid so. What name did you get? I don't follow. In the car tree, who do you have to buy for? Oh, uh... <clears throat> I believe it is Ray. Perfect. Let's trade. Trade? Yeah, see, I got Welsh. And uh, I can't buy for Lieutenant because, you see, I work for him. See, if I buy small, I'm a miser. If I buy big, then I'm kissing up to him. So it's lose-lose. Office politics. Even at Christmas. Not for me. Not in the good old days. Christmas Eve, give me a wide open what vista and a starry sky and a good it's sled not that dog. Big of a deal. Uh, what about uh, me and mother? You and my mother? Well, just get her a couple of cases of hairspray. Listen, you see, Ray, on the other hand, is no threat to me. He has nothing so easy to buy for. But the lieutenant, you don't even work for him. You can do whatever you want. It's a win win. Thanks. Farewell. Win win. Win win. <clears throat> what are you doing? I'm just wondering if my name was on a list here. I would think that unlikely, since you are dead. Huh. Back in 55, when I was heading a detachment up in Reliance, wasn't much of a detachment, really, just me and Delbert Foxworth. Well, Norbert Weatherwax 
got into sauce, went on a tear, tore up half the town. I sent Foxworth out to bring him back. He came back empty-handed. A couple of days later, I found out that Weatherwax was married to Foxworth's half-sister, Etta. Well, I guess I, I he was don't, hot. Don't, don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but is, does this story have a moral? Oh, yeah. Sometimes you have to do it yourself. That's the moral, son. 